it is a real pleasure on the one hand to see so many of you and actually to see people like Sophia and Eliane without masks on. Um, it's very, very nice to see you. It's very, very nice. But on the other hand, we are sad occasion in that we should be doing this as a big party in Messina. I promise you, the first opportunity we get to actually meet together, we will have one hell of a party to celebrate the fact that we have got rid of this horrible, horrible disease. But as I said, on the other hand, it's really exciting that this is the first time we've done a big virtual show with Kunstmatrix. So um, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this goes, because if this works, we'll make this also part of the end of semester events. So we have a virtual show, so it can be online, as well as the real shindig. So without further ado, because I'm not going to be exhibiting any of my artwork this evening, I'm going to hand over to the major domo for the evening, who is going to be Marina Bruning, and she will take us through the individual classes and onto the, your work. You are the important people this evening, not us. Let's see and hear what you've done. Okay, so, so what Marina, I, take, you're in yeah, charge. What I do is actually I show you my screen and actually what we are going, okay, no, now it's going. Ah, so here we are. Here we are in our virtual show. And uh, what we will do, we will start with printmaking. And then actually Christine will take over and <clears throat> show a sketchbook and then painting. Then Tim takes over and show his painting class. And then we will arrive to the very last room, which will be sculpture. Okay, so let's start. And Sophie, are you there, my captain for printmaking? Yes, I'm here. Ah, perfect. Uh, so actually now it's a little bit more uh, your turn when hopefully everything uh, goes as we want. <laughs> Great, I'm glad I can start us off. <laughs> okay. No, Sophia. So. <laughs> uh, okay, so this now actually I have to put you somewhere else, um, but otherwise I don't see what I can, <laughs> where to put. Um, okay, yeah, so here you see a little bit uh, how printmaking works. And now, uh, first one is Adrian. Adrian, are you here? Yes, I'm here. Ah, okay, so. Can All right, so I was in. in... Uh, you speak Please. a little bit about your work. What we could do is to go to see it a little bit together and then we go from one to one. So these are your three little works. You see, we have a beautiful wall, and now you talk, and Sophie, our captain, takes over and you talk about you want to have it uh, first like that and then we go from one to one? Certainly. Okay, good. So, so I was an introductory. Uh, I was in an introductory printmaking class. I focused initially on um, lino prints, and then later on uh, dry points. So the first one here is sort of a. These are complementary works. The one on the left with the little fiat is a lino cut. And the one on the right is a dry point, uh, both obviously printed. Um, the first, the the lino cut, the Fiat one is one of my, was were, well, it was one of my better lino cuts, so that's why I chose it here, uh, where I tried to use uh, different lines to sort of uh, make a sort a little bit of uh, depth in the um, in the print and uh, make the car appear more in the uh, foreground. But then on the other side, um, it was, it's a, a much more sketch derived artwork. And so uh, this one is one of my, I did a small series of sort of Edward Hopper inspired prints. Edward Hopper had a short uh, printmaking career uh, where he made um, 
something very similar to dry point. Uh, so the house and um, the sailing, the sailing yacht is our derivative works uh, where I've sort of taken the liberty to um, make something very similar to what he did. Uh, let's see, yeah, and here- You have 30 seconds left. <laughs> right, so on the house, I uh, tried to use uh, different lines to make uh, it very apparent that there are different textures in the siding and I'm molding the, the, on the house and there's just some sort of a meadow or something um, in the background. And then for the sailboat, it's not as pronounced perhaps, um, but I wanted to, I used some sort of flowing lines to indicate where, where shadows and the waves and so, uh, such were. I think that's it. Okay, thank you. So now I have, <laughs> ah, it's functioning very well. <laughs> um, maybe it'd be easier actually to start with the first one that I have and then move on like closer up. Yeah. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Sam. I was also in the introductory um, printmaking course. Um, I've never been formally trained in sketching. So this is the first print that I did. Um, but I soon realized that maybe like a realistic approach was not really my forte. So I decided to take inspiration from a subject that I was studying in another in my Renaissance to Rome course with Professor Gwyn, um, which is on the Cosmetesque floors um, in all around Rome. So I started with these individual prints and decided that, sorry, um, I wanted to do a final print with many of these, um, the colors that are actually used in the floors and then do some sort of footprints um, or shoe prints that sort of evoked the idea of how everybody walks into churches and looks up at these beautiful frescoes, but the floors which people walk all over are my favorite part personally. So this is one of the final prints that I did. I did a lot of other variations, but this is the one that I chose to present on today. Let's go to Luffy. Okay, hi. Um, I have been printmaking for about five years now. I took like a three year break because I didn't have any studio space to print and I didn't have the materials or the money to do so. So I was really excited when I got to come to AUR for study abroad this year and take a printmaking course. So um, actually it goes right to left, but the figures on the right, I did first the fish I did second, and then on the left, I did my dog. Oh, this is right, so let's um, actually. Yeah, they're all linoleum cuts, um, linoleum plates. I For the first part, I decided to go for a kind of like tarot card theme. I designed and sketched the skeletons myself. And then I just typed out like the devil, the emperor, the lovers, and then flipped it and copied it. And then for the fish, I just wanted to do something really busy. And this is what I came up with. And then Marina came up with the cool idea of layering everything with the different colors. And then for the dog, I wanted to just like, I, I, I miss my dog. So <laughs> I wanted to um, kind of bring him to life and work with like texture and fur and all of that. Sorry. Okay, here we are. So there's my uh, my koi fish. The ones on the bottom, I was going to do like a second plate for like the color inside the fish, but the plates didn't line up exactly how I wanted them to. So we just decided to print them as is, as a series. And my dog's name is Tank. <laughs> He's a bulldog. Okay, good. Thank you. So now I think. Okay. 
So, Melanie, can you tell us a little bit about your project? Yes, this is my um, continuation of my capstone project. Since I'm a communications major with the fine arts minor, I decided that I wanted to combine everything together from my capstone and animated um, film. And then obstacles that cats face within Rome through the cat's perspective. So this first part shows uh, the beginning of that project where like cats are looking up at a mean boy, they're looking up the, at a wall on the side of the river, they're looking through trash, that kind of thing. And then the cat sprites that show like a cat running or jumping that you can use for animation. But then this semester I focused on animals that the cats would meet in Rome. So I can see my nutria or muskrat that if you walk along the river in Rome, you'll see these guys playing in the water, swimming around like little otters, except they have a tail like a rat. <laughs> so they look like big rats. But um, so they swim around and play in, in there. They're kind of cute. So in my story, um, the nutria is Nellie and she likes shiny things and she's gonna send the kitten off on a, on a quest to find shiny things for her before she'll give the cat the information she needs to go on in her adventure. And then I have Polly the parakeet, which if you're around Rome, you've kind of noticed that these parrots, parakeets have kind of taken over the city. So I decided that we, I have to have a parakeet in my story. So this is Polly and um, she'll be zooming in to save the day when Muffin the cat has um, run in with the evil seagull Nero. So this is, this is what I've been doing this semester. <laughs> okay, good. So Lily, somebody, Lily has lost her voice. So somebody's really- I am taking over for Lily. Ah, okay, good, perfect. Okay. So I'm just gonna read what she sent me. Uh, the first print is a small woman in a crowd. She wanted to focus on figurative work and that was one of her first pieces. She was trying different styles with each and she thinks that the one in the middle has the most, she didn't, okay. The most like blocky look to it was the most effective way to get like the shadows that she wanted. That's for the second one. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> I can sorry, do it. Sorry, Lily, sorry. If that's okay. Are you talking about these? Yeah. Yes, that one. <laughs> At least I didn't say chunky. Okay, and then for your B, you wanted to work with multiple colors and a balance between the four, middle, and background. Okay, that was, that was it? Okay. Good. Okay, so now actually, good. So Tiffany, wait a moment, I just try to get a little, oops. Okay, there we are. Hi everyone. Um, so my prints, um, I was working with blue this semester and um, most of, or all of them are female focused. Um, the one on the very far right, I was working, I wanted to kind of work with texture and just deep carving. Oh, it's a woman, you know, emerging out of water. And then the one next to it over to the left, that is, um, a woman in, um, it's basically different women or women in different environments. So this is a woman in a um, mother nature type of environment. And then the next one over, um, they are, it's, it's two separate prints, but we just put them together. Um, they are women with halos. And again, like I just, you know, I really work with texture this semester, um, a lot of line work, um, yeah. That's it. <laughs> I think that was it. So um, I haven't forgotten any. <laughs> no. Okay, good. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. So I give 
over to uh, Christine. So I will share the screen. Let's see. Okay. Here we are. And I would give the floor immediately to Sara, which is our facilitator, and I would ask her to introduce shortly the course. Mm -hmm. Sara? Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Sarah. Um, I was in Roman sketchbooking this semester, which was basically a beginner's course for um, learning basic techniques for drawing. And um, we unfortunately weren't able to go on site a lot this semester, which is a big part of the course because of COVID. But I think we did a good job of utilizing the local monuments and um, the studio time to really improve our skills. Um, we basically practiced um, accuracy of using references and um, using the picture plane, as you can see in the picture on the left, using different mediums such as pencils, we used charcoal, chalk, um, and ink. And um, in the gallery today, we have our final compositions, which were basically like an expression of our lives in Rome. So we each took emotions that we um, had during our time living in Rome and used those to make abstract drawings and put them all together in a composition and also include elements of Rome like the monuments, the statues, fountains, rivers, things like that. So. Um, I think you guys will be interested to see how we all view Rome differently. Thank you for coming. Okay, thank you. So, mm -hmm. Here we have the work of Filippo. Yes. Hi, can Hi. you say something about your work? Yeah, I, this is, I decided to draw uh, the walls of Rome, Narsi Romulus Remo, that's the symbol of uh, the Rome. Uh, I titled the drawing uh, Roman Mother because uh, this is my first experience away from home for so long and uh, Rome proved uh, to be a beautiful city that was able to welcome me in the best way and uh, where I centrally developed three adjectives like curiosity, mature and focused. In fact, uh, in the drawing, the curiosity uh, is represented uh, by the small eyes inside Romero and Remus. Uh, the maturity is re represented by the hundreds of scales uh, with, with uh, which I colored the, the wolf. And uh, finally, the focus uh, uh, is represented uh, uh, by thousands of dots uh, used to color the, the pedestal that support uh, the, the wolves. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So we have here we have the work of Amy. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, so my three adjectives were growth, excitement, and uh, loneliness. So this is my drawing of different monuments in Rome and through the straight lines, which seem like stairs going upwards. Um, I attempted to represent growth and how my experience in Rome has personally been like a life-changing one for me. Uh, secondly, through the curvy lines, uh, which like divide different sections of the drawing, uh, I have represented the excitement, which remains the same every time I go around Rome, it feels like it's the first time. And thirdly, the dots uh, throughout the paper uh, represent loneliness, which even though I spent over like almost three years in the busy city of Rome, there were like certain moments where I would feel like alone or homesick. Thank you. Thank you very much. So here we have the work of Andrea. Hello, Andrea. Hi. Are you uh, there? <laughs> yeah. Sorry for my English, but I'm Italian. Okay. Uh, <laughs> As a final drawing, uh, I decided to combine what are my emotion, personality with the experience uh, living these months. 
uh, at the art course. Uh, in my painting, uh, the double personality uh, is contained through an um, angel and devil who come to life from the roots uh, of a tree. Uh, in end, uh, the old uh, tree the, that takes shape um, represented the um, Circo Massimo. And uh, the top, uh, a man is depicted uh, who represent the balance of life. And to conceive my design, I use uh, the ink technique for both the roots and the, the sun and the turner. And uh, this is all. Okay, thank you. Okay, here we have the work of Penrose. Um, so I just focused on the Pantheon for my drawing. Um, I really don't have any experience in drawing, so I decided to just focus on one piece. Um, and I chose to focus on the adjectives unbroken and ancient because to me that's what the Pantheon symbolizes. I used a combination of the sanguine pencil and charcoal and um, the Sharpie as well. And yeah. Okay, thank you. Here we have Sara. Um, so the three emotions that I'm trying to represent in this are fear, happiness, and growth from left to right. And I just used um, elements of Rome that stand out to me to represent these things. So I have like the trees arching over to represent fear and the rivers to represent happiness. And I have the fountains to represent growth. And so if you can tell there, that's um, the Trevi fountain and then stacked on top is one of the fountains from Piazza Navona. So. Okay, thank you. Here's the drawing of the ink wash of Olivia. Yeah, um, hi, I'm Olivia. Hi. I chose this view of Circo Massimo for my drawing because something that I always loved about Rome is that there's all these cool places that you can see on your everyday life. So this view I see every day when I go to school and back because I see it from bus 60, 628. And I wanted to kind of memorize that because I don't think there's many other cities that you can see things like this on your everyday life, just commuting to school or work or wherever you go. And I decided to use ink for it because it makes it look more nostalgic because I know that I'm probably not gonna live here forever. Um, so I wanted to kind of encompass that feeling. Yeah. Thank you. Here we have the drawing of Tatiana. Hi, so um, this is uh, one of my first experience uh, with art in general. And uh, I think that with uh, this course, I learned a, I learned a lot. And uh, that my, uh, my drew was inspired by Asher and uh, uh, his concept of illusion. And uh, the meaning behind my uh, work uh, is illustrated with three adjectives and are immortal, magic, um, mortal, uh, magic, uh, immortal, chaotic, and uh, I and beauty too. So, what I want to represent with the eyes is the change that uh, had Rome in the years and in the centuries. So we can see that uh, the the two columns, one represent the beauty and the glory of Rome, and the other one the destruction of the city. And uh, after we can see um, the view of uh, the zodiac because I live in Rome. One of my favorite pl places in Rome is uh, the Zodiac, and I think it's a magical place to see, um, and the night too, in the night too. And um, one thing that uh, I think represents eternity is Rome in general, but it also represented by the rules that I decided to design. And uh, I think the technique that I use most uh, is uh, chiaroscuro, because uh, it's one of my favorite techniques that I learned in the course. And uh, that's it. Okay, thank you. So here we have the work of Zuka. Yeah, hello. 
Hello. This was also my first time having experience with the art class. So the reason I chose uh, the keyhole was because this is the first or like tourist attraction sort of that I saw in Rome near the Orange Garden and it kind of shows how little I was able to see in Rome during my first, well, first semester because there was too much to see. So I tried to put the biggest emotional impact of attractions that had on me, which was the dome, which represents the strength, river, which represents the sort of fragility of human nature and the flowers and twigs, which represent basically sadness for me, at least. Okay, thank you. So this is the work of Isabel. I don't know if she's here. So it's charcoal and an ink brush. Okay, I don't think she's here. She was an auditor in the course. Okay, let's go to the next one. So this is the work of Elena. Hi. Um, Hi. So the three adjectives I use I used in order to describe Rome were hectic, mesmerizing, and charming. Um, and I chose to represent hectic through um, the masses of people or the couple of people that I drew in the very bottom and through the disruptive lines that go through the entire picture. Um, and I also chose um, to do um, to visualize the concept of mesmerizing through the stars and the angels, um, which you see all over Rome. I mean, the angels um, and adds a little bit of history to the picture. Um, and then in order to visualize charming, I just chose to show like bubbles that surround the hectic lines um, just to make it seem a little bit more like Rome is enveloped by hills or generally just enveloped by coziness. Um, and yeah. Okay, thank you. And here's the work of Simone, ups and downs. Yes. So um, I represent the, the Colosseum because uh, for me, uh, Colosseum is uh, all around you in its aspect. And um, behind the Colosseum, there is a uh, uh, the stairway of uh, Trinità di Monti in uh, Piazza di Spagna that uh, represents uh, my growth in uh, this experience. And um, I choose the, the, uh, the red orange color because uh, mm, is for me the color of, uh, of uh, the symbol of the color of Rome. And uh, that's it. Okay, thank you. So we've seen all the work of just a moment. Let me. Um, now we should go to the painting room. We'll do the room of painting two next. So let me try to get to the painting room. Thanks to all the students of Sketchbook who, who has put a lot of effort and passion in their drawings. So here we are in the painting, um, in the room of painting techniques one and the painting workshop. Uh, I would give uh, the floor to, um, uh, to Natalie, who's our facilitator and who could briefly introduce a course. Are you there, um, Natalie? Hi. Hi. Okay. Um, hi, I'm Natalie. I took part in Painting Techniques 1, which was an inter introductory class to painting. Um, not that a lot of our artists were really in need of the introductory, but um, we just, we created three pieces each um, that I think we're all really proud of in the end, even though it was a lot of stress and struggle, but we all got there, I think. And um, yeah, that's that's our class. It's just, okay. she let us have a lot of free range. So everything's really interesting, yeah. Okay, so I've put your artwork immediately here. 
<laughs> which is a good because its title is off to a good start so i would i, I thought it was a good word to start with awesome um this was just like an experiment she wanted us to work with um the shading and glazing and just kind of understand how to even put like the paint on the canvas you know um so this was just an abstract piece that was pretty much an experiment but it turned out great so this is these are your other two projects yeah um this one is just called human nature it took it out of me this semester but um i was really happy with it i mixed like natural and like humanistic um tones just to bring together this piece um using like two reference photos that i really enjoyed and i was inspired by matisse um for the figures and just a friend's photo for the trees and i think i used mainly um chiaroscuro for this uh, and then the second picture is just um, Sugarloaf Mountain in Brazil, where uh, part of my family's from, and my grandfather was an oil painter, so he has an actual painting that's really, really amazing of this uh, mountain, and I made this for my mother as a Christmas gift, so that's the story behind that. <laughs> okay, thank you. So here we have the work of Ariana. Are you there, Ariana? Hi. Uh, yes. Could someone just pass before me because I'm just entering um, the the house, and so can someone just go in front of me? Is it okay? Okay. Let's go to. Sorry. Next. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. So this is Ilian. Hello. Okay. So these are my three <laughs> paintings that I made over the semester. Um, just as everyone else in my class, I think we all had a bit of a, a moment. And this first painting was actually part of our lesson where we were also going over shapes, which I kind of completely ignored. And I went more on like a spiritual path. Within the photo, you can't really see it as well, but it's basically a gray road taking us up and there's like spirits in the sky and then like the holiness of the mountain. And it kind of represents the journey of life in general, not specifically Rome. And then the second image was actually, it first starts as a concept when I took an a photo of my roommate in like, um, in a room full of light, different colored lights. And I took multiple and I just thought it was really like, just I just really like colors. So that was kind of it. And I took a lot of inspiration from Van Gogh and from uh, Gauguin and uh, Freud and all that. And um, it was the first time ever doing people. So I know it's it's not my best work, but I really enjoyed challenging myself. Um, and then the third image is more of an abstract one. It's very much off the path of uh, the oil paintings, but um, I'm kind of an art, well, artist, if I can call myself that, who likes using different materials. And I really, really enjoyed this piece. It's like using sand and rocks. And I also broke glass and I super glued it onto the edge of this oval shape and I also really like blue so that's why I have blue in everything that's it <laughs> okay thank you so next we have Rachel <laughs> Rachel are you there okay yes um hi everyone this piece was um you know starting the semester was my first time working with oil so like Natalie said it was kind of experimental we were instructed to make shapes and um, a composition. So um, this is what I came up with and this piece sort of guided my uh, my color choice I guess for the rest of the semester and yeah. Yes let's put the other Adam images so we can tell about these. Something okay. and this is my, um, these are my olives. Uh, these ones gave me a real hard time. I was challenging myself with trying to make expression on faces instead of just um, uh, uh, like a cold face without any without any emotion. Um, and eventually, I started to see them sort of emerge from their 
um, from their skins. And um, yeah, I thought that the colors were something that I really um, enjoyed working with, especially green this semester. And as you can see, that carried out into the next one, which is, thank you, which is self-portrait. And um, I was instructed to kind of be looser with this one. So I didn't have really a sketch um, that I wanted to stick to or that I, that I had to stick to. And that kind of freed me from um, myself, I guess, in a way. And um, yeah, I'm happy with it, how it turned out. It's been a nice semester to just, uh, to just paint and not have to worry about um, much else. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so let's move on. I can talk about mine uh, now if you want. Yes, yes, I will come back. Okay. okay. <laughs> so here we have Ariane, uh, we have Alexandra. Hello. Hi. Uh, so this semester was my first time painting since I was a little kid. Um, so this first one was an exercise in uh, tonality. I guess, uh, values, values. <laughs> uh, it's a chiaroscuro, chiaroscuro composition with a colored glaze over parts of it. I left some of it unfinished intentionally. Um, it's called synthetic happiness and I'll let you infer what that's all about. <laughs> the uh, next one I did was actually my final piece. Uh, lilacs on display. Uh, for these two, I was trying to work with the impressionist style, which is something completely new to me. <laughs> um, but I enjoy working with colors and using colors instead of just lines to create objects in depth, which it's there. <laughs> um, uh, the one on the right is called Horizon Life. And it's, uh, I used a reference painting for this one, but I changed up the colors to suit my own needs. And I like it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. So this is the work of Ethan. I don't know if he's there. Yes, I'm here. Okay, so tell us about your work. Uh, the first one was uh, done with the, the glazing technique. Uh, it's just um, I bought these two figurines off of, the, off of somebody in Spain for like two euros each, and I really liked them. It's just like wood figurines of a king and a queen. So I figured I would uh, paint those for my first one. Um, the second one is, uh, is Benjamin Franklin wearing a mask, so I guess it's kind of him slowing the spread. I, decided, I thought it'd be cool to bring like a, uh, a historical figure into like today's world, essentially, and kind of place him there. Um, and he's a lot of uh, inspiration from like uh, the early uh, American colonial artists like uh, Gilbert Stewart or Benjamin West. Um, but I really like the this one. And then the third one on the on the right is a I guess you can call it a facial reconstruction, uh, but it you know just from artistic the standpoint of uh, Alexander the Great. I took it from a um, from a bust uh, the, that's uh, on display at the British Museum. So I just uh, I essentially sketched out the bust and then just gave uh, lifelike features to the to the marble bust. And, um, that's pretty much it. Okay, thank you. Okay, and here we have the work of Jade. Yes, hello. Hello. Um, uh, as far as I can tell, everyone else in my class made three pieces this semester. I only made two, and in my mind, they are still both not completely finished. But um, the one to the left is the abstract glazing technique that most everyone else did in my class. I was also fairly new to oil painting, so it was a good way to sort of reintroduce myself to it since I hadn't done it in so long. And um, I think both I and uh, my professor quickly found out that 
I, I really like painting in a very particular uh, detailed way, which I try to emphasize more in the second painting, which I continued working on literally up until the day I left. Um, I, it's been said a lot, but I do believe this would be considered a case of like chiaroscuro and like um, very intense lighting and darkness effects and shading. And I think that's about it. Um, if I could, I would still work on it. Okay. <laughs> you will. <laughs> okay. So here we have Tiffany's work. Tiffany? Hi. Um, hi again. Um, so this was my first painting and um, for this class and it was um, very experimental. Um, I used different techniques, different thicknesses of paint, like heavy impasto to um, sheer washes of oil paint. Um, this painting challenged me multiple times. I wanted to set it on fire three or four times. Um, it is the cave. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I show you the other two projects. Okay, so let's talk about this. Tiffany? Okay, um, so for my second and third painting, I did trees. Um, I went to Villa Pamphili to sketch some of the Roman pines just to get, you know, the dimensions because they're really oddly shaped. They're super tall and they look like the foliage is small, but it's actually kind of like half of the length of the tree. So the one on the left, I sketched it a, a good amount of times. Um, and then the tree on the right, I didn't sketch it. I just went freehand with the brush. So you can see how they're different. Um, the one on the right is more jagged. And then the one on the left is um, smoother, I guess you could say. Um, one is daytime tree. The other one is a nighttime scene. Um, yeah. Those are my treats. <laughs> okay. I did it again. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm getting there. Okay, so we go back now to Ariana. Thank you, Tiffany. <laughs> okay. okay, Ariana. Uh, so these are my three paintings, they're in oil and uh, normally I really like to work with uh, watercolor paint and that's why the first one, the first painting um, that we did, like I'm not used to really bold colors and I'm not, um, I don't really normally use oil paint, that's why the first one is kind of like diluted, it's more details than like the others and I didn't really layer on top, I just kind of started like drawing and then I went over, I used like a red color and then I shaded the geometric like inside the shapes. And then I went in with the black paint just to kind of give it some dimension. And I know like after like looking back, I saw like standing away from the painting, I saw that it looked kind of like it was underwater like an underwater like creature. Uh, there is a mouth, I don't know if you see it, it's really small. It's kind of like a figure, but not really, uh, abstract kind of. And so after that, I drew the geometric shapes. I went, I thought that there was something still missing. So I went in with the lines, the uh, horizontal lines. And then at the end, I kind of just added that blue, those blue triangles, um, just a bit everywhere because I thought that it was too much red in my painting. So yeah. Uh, the second one here is inspired by David Hockney's work um, of Fred and Marsha uh, Wiseman. Uh, so instead of putting her, uh, Marsha and her husband, I just used her as uh, inspiration and I did her, I created 
three of her. So, but so she was. So the painting, the original painting, is only her seen the front from a front angle, and they used. I also added her on the side and from the back. Um, I kind of did like what Hockney did is to put like as if the figures were one in front of the other. Uh, and yeah, it was, I mean, it's the first time I kind of do this technique of art um, and use like bold colors. So it was kind of hard for me even, especially for the lines, uh, to make the lines straight. Uh, but in general, like I really enjoyed painting, even though it was like stressful a bit sometimes and I didn't really know what to do for like the background um, but uh, the teacher Christine she showed me like how to kind of make it like a soft finish by using a, a soft brush to go over it and I liked how like I added the small details of the the greenery and the back and the uh, um, the leaves of the tree okay. and then my fear my third the third, <laughs> thank you. Uh, the third work is the self-portrait, and so for the back, so I started like sketching. And normally, when I sketch self-portraits, I do kind of half of the face, or not even just like the mouth or the eyes or just the nose. So here was kind of the first time I did like a whole self-portrait. Um, I got inspired by this artist that I found online on Instagram. Uh, I forgot the name now, but he uses, I mean, this, these shades of colors that I really liked. Uh, for oh. the background, I used the spatula too. Okay. Okay, thank you, Ariana. Okay, thank you. So now uh, we've seen all the work of painting one, so I think I can uh, give the floor to Tim. Tim? Okay, here we go. So I will share my screen. Let's see, you cannot share your screen while another participant is sharing. Uh, Christine, you have to get out oh, of the okay. sharing. Okay, stop share. Sorry. There we go. Fantastic. Okay. So let's see. All right. Greetings all. My name is Professor Allen and I'm going to share with you. Our paint class. Um, and it was when I put this show together that I sadly realized we did not have one big group photo. So there are the five of us that we're in this class. Um, it was principally plein air painting, but to tell you more, I'm going to turn the, pass the mic over to Stephanie Gandolfi, who I believe is coming to us from oh. Norway. Norway, hi. So our class revolves around plein air painting, which is essentially um, outdoors painting. So we were going to the beautiful sites of John Eccolo. So we went to Villa Charra and we went to uh, Villa Pamphili. But uh, towards the end of our semester, we also explored with cityscapes on our Johnny Clo Hill, which was challenging enough. But as we were taught from the very beginning was that we were starting to concentrate with seven masses and seven values, because this would uh, limit the potential of clutter in the landscape. Because personally, and I think for everyone, it was really overwhelming when we were looking over a cityscape or even even in Villa Charra, it was so much detail. So in this class, you will see that we were trying to find beauty in a more distillate, simplified way. So we were not um, detail oriented. I mean, we even, we were really lucky with the weather and we were able to um, use the sites in like the entire semester. We even went out on rainy days um, but there was one day that it was really raining cats and dogs. So we started a still life at, in the studio, which we um, completed as a, um, as a homework assignment um, kind of thing. But then we would, every class we would have a critique. So we would naturally progress. Um, so yeah, that was the introduction. And I will hand the floor to Sophia then Cecily, then Daniela, then Lily, and then me in the end again. All right, let's see if I can figure this thing out here. Okay.
Okay, hello again. Um, this was my first time ever painting with oil paints and especially doing plein air. So I basically started from scratch not knowing how to use oil paint, um, which I found a little bit difficult, but the still life really helped me just like kind of solidify the techniques that um, Professor Allen was teaching us. Uh, this was at uh, Via Pamphili. This is the first piece that I actually started to like nail down the techniques. I never really got a full painting um, done out there, but I did end up focusing on like for this painting example, I, for example, I focused on the shadow and the pathway, which I feel like I really nailed. And I'm very proud of that one. Just let me know when you want to go to the next one, Sophia. Okay, the next one. <laughs> Okay, and then this one was the first painting that we did at Janicolo. I wasn't able to get the city down because there was just way too much going on. I couldn't, my ADHD went off the wall and I was like, which building should I paint next? <laughs> and that's not what the class was about. It was about more like masses and values versus like getting into like the nitty gritty details. But I was very impressed by myself with the like, gradient of the sky and my mountains. Okay, then the next one. And then this was the last painting we did at Gianni Colo. I um, feel like this piece, I really was able to encapsulate all the stuff that Professor Allen was teaching us during the past semester. I really focused on using this piece. You can't talk. I was focusing on using like softer edges and making the painting and the mountains behind look more hazy, working more with like middle, back and foreground. And I feel like I kind of nailed it, <laughs> even though it's not a completed painting. Okay, all done. Okay, next up, Cecily. Hi. Hello. So this was, I'm Cecily. This was also my first time um, using oil paints and plein air specifically because I'm more of a drawer and I like patterns more. So this class was very challenging for me because I really wanted to add a lot of detail and it wasn't the object of the class. And so this was one of the pieces I think, I don't actually remember where this was, but it, um, I chose it because it was the first time I got masses going front to back correctly. And the next one. I think this is Villa Pamphili. Villa Pamphili? Yeah. Okay. Villa Pamphili. I think. Yeah. I think so. This was my still life that we worked on throughout the whole semester. And it was also one of the first times I've had to paint a still life, uh, which was really difficult for me. And um, being that it was one of the first times I had to create a still life, um, I was challenged with, you know, getting the um, edges, circles, and colors down. But in the end, I feel like this was one of my better pieces towards the end of the semester because I got to work on it for so long. The next one. I'm a huge Helen Frankenthaler fan who Tim, uh, Professor Allen doesn't always love her work, but um, I'm very geometric based. So this was my um, geniculo, right? Am I saying that right? Yeah. Yep. This was my go of the scene of Rome with the mountains in the sky. And I do think that this was one, of, this was how I ended the class. This was one of my better pieces and I'm proud of this one, so. I think it's fair to point out, by the way, that all of the plein air paintings were done um, in situ and they were done during that class. Yeah. So for example, all of the ones except for the still lifes were painted within the, the five hours. That and we, we had. never actually had five hours. And, it yeah. was had... That's right, but they were, they, they were all one shot paintings. So that was also a, a challenge. Yes. Okay. Daniela. Okay, my turn. Um, so same here. It's the first time that I've ever done 
plein art painting and same I've never done the alla prima technique which literally drove me insane the entire semester because I never got to actually finish a piece so this is my first piece that I actually liked during the class um it's unfinished so I really really wish I could have finished it it was also done in Villa Pamphili and yeah I don't know really what to say it's kind of a flat piece this one so next um, this is my still life. It's the first time I did a still life and I really, really enjoyed this one. It was kind of challenging for me. The bottle was extremely hard to do, but, and the fact that we also had a limited palette was quite complicated because I had a green apple. So trying to work with the lighting. What was the palette, Daniela? Uh, it was burnt sienna, uh, ultramarine blue, and warm white and a bit of ivory black were allowed to use, I believe. Yeah. yeah. And then last one. Uh, this was the last painting we did the, uh, from the last day when we went to Genicolo. It's my absolute favorite painting from the entire semester. I really, really managed to blend the colors well and do like a whole transition. So I'm really, really proud of this piece and yeah. That's it? Okay. Good work. All right, next is, uh, who's next? Lily. So I am going to talk on Lily. I think somebody is speaking for Lily, but I- Yeah, it's me. Um, I'm gonna talk okay. about for Lily. So the, uh, I'm <laughs> just gonna read what she said. So she said that the horizontal, cityscape made me realize that I joined, enjoyed um, painting this style of landscape the most. Um, and then the next one, which is the uh, vertical one. Um, if you go to the right, Timothy. Right. Hello? I'm on the, I'm on the center one. Yeah. Are you there? Yeah. So here, um, Lily are you said, there? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so here, Lily talks uh, about that she were allowed to um, dive deeper in and put more uh, details into the city, and that she could uh, incorporate um, warm to um, cool tones within the city to um, have the illusion of what comes forth and what goes back into space because this would make um, 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 the depth into the painting and um, where she also had more intensity with the sap green in the foreground as well. And then for the still life, um, which she was really happy with, uh, was all about working with the limited palette and working with temperature shifts, um, which again incorporated both cool and warm uh, tones throughout the piece uh, in both the uh, objects, so in the apple and the um, um, the base, but also in the background. Super. And lastly, Stephanie. Yeah, lastly uh, is me. Uh, so this was actually the um, first, that was really intense. Uh, that was the first uh, colored um, plain air painting with it because uh, the first two classes went to uh, do monochrome studies of light in the Villa Chara. So this was the first one where we actually added colors to our palette on a um, um, white under, like there was no underpainting essentially. So we mixed up our greens. We um, uh, were now allowed to mix and tricks a bit more and take that knowledge we have from the two first weeks in terms of values and masses and incorporate it into the first um, um, painting. And I'm really happy with this one in the sense that it was a simple composition. I chose a path which could lead the viewer into the painting. I also um, did some more impasto in the foreground because details brings um, something forth. And also again, um, essentially less is more. So I made the background really bushy and um, I was um, really happy with how the first um, 
plein air painting with colors turned out for me as well. It was the first time doing a plein air painting um, um, ever. <laughs> so you can go to the next one. This was actually my last uh, plein air uh, painting when we were standing at the Gianni Polo Hill and looking out to the cityscape. Um, I feel here, um, we, I at least, I essentially reduced or went from seven masses to four masses. And although that's um, less in masses, it's more again. And, uh, and I was trying to do a more um, smoother transition between the um, sky and the mountain. So like this time I, I started with the sky and I moved myself uh, down towards the painting. I um, was really trying to control my edges. Um, think of what an effect an edge can do to your painting in terms of uh, emphasis and focus and direction. So for, at least for the mountain, um, I tried to really uh, have blend and um, have smooth transition also from the mountain into the city. So again, from cool to warm because warm colors, intense colors bring something forth. And then I included a palazzo. Whoops, sorry. No, no, that's okay. okay. Uh, I just wanted right. to say that I included a palazzo that I saw in the background because it, it was really easy to get lost in all the cities. Um, so I did see the escape. So I chose one building that I thought stood out that I wanted to put some emphasis on. And then this was my uh, still life. Uh, worked for hours with glazing and scumbling and trying to build up the layers from what colors that we could work out from. So as um, Daniela um, already pointed out, um, we actually started the, all the first weeks just with three pigments. So the burnt sienna, the ultramarine and the um, warm white. And later we were allowed to add ivory black and um, we were trying to find the proportion keys. We were um, also thinking in terms of what we did in the landscape in terms of temperature and edges and um, blending. And, uh, but this, of course, here we had another material, which was glass. So here, um, at least towards the end, I learned that I could try to tone up the contrast a bit for, to get that sense of a glass material. And then for the peach, we did countless glazes and scumbles because um, to have to um, make it get this fussy kind of effect onto it, like some texture. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out. And I also made sure that the background would be cool and the foreground would be warm, like with the, where the um, vanishing line essentially like the shoulder of the shelf went because that would as well contribute to bringing something forward uh, in contrast to bringing something backward. So yeah, that was my three paintings. Excellent. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you all. And now I believe I'm passing this back to Marina. So I will stop the share screen. Yeah, yeah, we are now in the last room. This is for our little sculpture weekend. This is uh, one credit course, uh, which is once a year, or sometimes also twice a year, uh, where the students come uh, to my studio and work Friday, Saturday, and Sunday very intensely uh, on two pieces of clay. And uh, yeah, normally people enjoy it. We were very lucky because we had good weather, but it's a very small group because of COVID, um, a lot of people didn't come in the end uh, because it was just starting the new wave. Alas, all the three students can't be here tonight uh, because Molly and Kathleen are on the flight and Jara just wrote me that she had really difficulties with the internet. So, um, but, uh, so I talk for them and you get all the information you need. Okay, so this is about the course and here we have the first uh, work. This is from Molly 
and I um, read what Molly wrote me. My three-day trip with Professor Brüning was very fun and refreshing. It was nice to see the Roman countryside and be able to create sculptures outside while looking at the beautiful view. With my first sculpture, I didn't really know what I was doing, so I just started putting pieces together to see what looked best. It turned out to look like a mysterious box that was opening in the middle, which I liked. The bone sculpture was really easy to make and I enjoyed that one of the most. Overall, this trip was a great experience and I learned a lot. Yeah, this is the first uh, work they had to do and it's a sort of construction, deconstruction and reconstruction. Uh, it's about the basic forms of sculpture, making in clay, and then deconstruct them and reconstruct them. So that was Molly's work. So this is the work of Yara, and I I write what she was uh, I read what she was saying. We spent a wonderful weekend working on basic sculpture techniques. After watching my mom sculpt so effortless over the past year and finally using the same materials and seeing how difficult it is to get the right shape and get it to stay in place, I can really appreciate what a wonderful art form it truly is. What started off as three geometric shapes turned into some sort of collage from cutouts. The interpretation of my first piece kept changing along the way. The more I moved, the smaller forms around. Some of my interpretations over it, of it over time were an Etruscan mask, a bird in its nest, a de de deconstructed rabbit, an ancient village, a high-tech spider. I wanted to challenge myself to see how many interpretations I could get from the same shape as seen from different angles. Um, okay, then uh, the next one is um, Caitlin, and Caitlin wrote, My first piece is inspired by my home state of Colorado, USA. I wanted to blend together smooth and wavy lines with sharp lines to recreate an abstract mountain nature scene. The bone is contracted I constructed was my favorite piece of the two I completed because of the complex form and the white ball jaw head. Working on these pieces over the weekend in the countryside was a fun way to learn how to sculpt and was a great way to be inspired by Italy. Okay, yeah, this is inspired by um, her hometown. Oops. And then you see um, the pieces with the bones here is a photo of the bone and the clay in raw. So that was the second piece they did. Uh, I'm a lover of bones and big collector of bones living in the countryside. You often find some bones. Um, and yeah, so th there you see the raw clay. And uh, this is actually the bones of Jara, which was a rather complex uh, um, bone because it was a part of a vertebra, I think. So, this is the bone of Caitlin. This is a part of the jaw of a wild boar. You see that a little bit um, from this tooth there. I mean, we presumed that. And this is from Molly, the from the two sides. Uh, which I think is a bone of a cow, to be honest. Yeah, here are a few scenes where they're working outside. It was a lovely day, at least on Sunday, uh, on Saturday, we had a lot of sun. And here again, so three bones together. And then we also, because we were such a small group, so we could do a little small tour in one of these ancient villages. This is in front of an old broken castle. That was it. Thank you very much.